Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems, Standards for Interoperable Health IT, Lecture A. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. 1. Explain why standards are required, how they are developed, and how adoption is encouraged. 2. Name and describe the types of interoperability standards available. 3. Summarize functionality of HL7V2, CDA, CCDA, and FHIR. And 4. Require HL7V2 messages, CDA documents, and FHIR resources. This lecture will discuss the necessity for standards and then explain how they are developed and how adoption is encouraged. According to the JSON report, standards are essential for healthcare interoperability at scale. JSON is an independent group of scientists that advises the U.S. government on science and technology. In April 2014, JSON published a report called A Robust Health Data Infrastructure. The following quote is from that report. A meaningful exchange of information, electronic and otherwise, can take place between two parties only when the data are expressed in a mutually comprehensible format and include the information that both parties deem important. While these requirements are obvious, they have been major obstacles to practical exchange of healthcare information. When this quote is talking about a mutually comprehensible format, it is referring to a standard. Every interoperability project is a semantic harmonization project. Simply put, you must evaluate, compare, map, and agree on meaning for all information and events communicated between systems. However, if instead you map to a standard, it is more feasible to achieve interoperability at scale. Interoperability without standards means you have to conduct semantic harmonization between every two interface points. This leads to an exponential number of harmonization tasks. But if you do interoperability with standards, you map each system to standards and then your communication is using standards. So this leads to a linear number of harmonization tasks. And so at scale, it's only growing linearly. For more information, please see Unit 4. Let's talk about how standards are actually formed. There are four ways standards come into fruition. The first way is ad hoc. This is an informal agreement to make a standard. An example of that would be a couple of people decide to do something the same way. They agree to use the same format. De facto is where a large number choose to adopt something so then it becomes a standard. This is like a trend. So for example, one person starts wearing a certain kind of sneakers and then another person wear the same kind of sneakers. After a while, everyone wants to wear that kind of sneakers. Then we have a government-developed and mandated standard. For example, if you want to submit your tax information to the IRS, you need to use their standard form. However, the most common and widely accepted method of developing standards is via a formal voluntary consensus process. Organizations that develop standards are called Standards Development Organizations, or SDOS. This is a list of SDOs for healthcare interoperability, such as ASC X12 or American Standards Committee X12 Subcommittee, Health Level 7 or HL7, International Health Terminology Standard Development Organization or IHTSDO, LOINC or Logical Observation Identifiers Names and Codes, NLM or National Library of Medicine, and NCPDP or National Council of Prescription Drug Programs. This is not a comprehensive list. For additional information on standards, please refer to Component 9. Standards development organizations usually follow a formal consensus-based process. Here is an example of a process that is done by ANSI, or the American National Standards Institute. This is the common set of principles in the standard development organization. For ANSI, consensus on a proposed standard is by a group of stakeholders that includes representatives from materially affected and interested parties. First thing is that you are required to have a consensus on a proposed standard. You need representatives from materially affected and interested parties, which means that you need to have the appropriate representation and consensus among that stakeholder representation. 
The ANSI Standards Development Organization is an umbrella group that sits over numerous standards. One of these is Health Level 7, or HL7, which would be discussed further in this unit. Broad-based public review and comment on draft standards are required. Consideration of the review and comments and response to the comments by voting members are important. You need to incorporate approved changes into the draft standard, and you must provide a right to appeal. In addition to standards development organizations, there are also other formal organizations that accelerate standards development and adoption. These organizations are involved in and encourage citizen development and adoption. They do that in multiple ways. They might provide some financial support, actively volunteer as a group to help accelerate the adoption of the particular standard objectives, provide tools, build reference implementations, test the standards, get different vendors together to test the standards, or provide testing tools. A really important role of some of these organizations is to develop implementation guides or profiles to take the standard to a new level by providing additional rules and definition to the standard, reducing vagueness and allowing for easier implementation. Additional rules could be what terminology to use, how to ensure secure transmission, clarification on field lengths, tightening of required fields, guidance, etc. This will be discussed later. These organizations also often follow formal processes. Here are examples of some organizations that foster standards development and adaption. One is ANSI, because it is an umbrella organization that supports a whole group of standards development organizations. Integrating the Healthcare Environment, or IHE, is an international organization that creates implementation guides and provides interoperability testing of vendor profiles. The National Institute of Standards, or NIST, provides tooling, certification criteria, and test scripts for the ONC certifications. The ONC Standards and Interoperability Framework, also known as the SNI Framework, is an organization of volunteers facilitated by ONC, the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology. They also create implementation guides, push the standards organizations to publish these guides, and fills remaining gaps that might exist in the standards. There are several groups that have been formed to help accelerate the development of a standard called HL7 FIRE. One is called Smart Health IT, or FIRE, and another is called the Argonauts. Both of these groups combine this whole framework and uses FIRE that people can use with code and testing platform. The Argonauts are a group of vendors and providers that are just committed to implementing FIRE to make sure that it is being actually adapted and implemented. The Health Story Project was formed to push the development of HL7 CCDA. The Sequoia eHealth Exchange Committee's role is to support the Nationwide Health Information Network Specifications, also known as NWIN. These include the NHIN Direct and Connect projects. The Commonwealth Health Alliance is pushing for standards-based interoperability in the U.S., and they are publishing specifications that are used in standards as well as in guides. The National Library of Medicine is facilitating terminology standards adoption by maintaining value sets in its Value Set Authority Center, or VSAC. Value sets are subsets of concepts from code systems for specific purposes. The NLM value sets are used with the ONC Certification of Systems to limit the terminology values used. The list on this slide is not a comprehensive list, but those are examples of organizations fostering standards development and adoption. Integrating the healthcare enterprise has a long history of creating implementation profiles, testing standards, and encourage their adoption by organizing connectathons. Vendors who have implemented the IHE implementation profiles are encouraged to participate in connectathons where it is a formal test. The vendors are matched up, and they have to prove their interoperability with the other vendor systems. IHE provides specific tests and has monitors at the Connectathon who check and approve the testing results. The U.S. government encourages health IT standards adoption, and the major way they have been doing this is with the Meaningful Use Program. It is required that hospitals and doctors adopt certified electronic health record technology. 
The certified technology regulations requires the use of interoperability standards. This led to the development of test scripts, test data, and test tools for the regulated standards. By requiring certification, one would have to prove that the standards were actually being used. Additionally, the Office of the National Health Coordinator for Health Information Technology publishes a yearly standards advisory. ONC reviews the existing standards and provides guidance on what they consider to be the best available standards for the year. ONC also runs challenge events and testing events to encourage standards testing and adoption. This concludes Lecture A of Standards for Interoperable Health IT. To summarize, standards are essential to scale interoperability. There are formal processes and multiple organizations for developing standards. Also, there are also organizations that encourage standards adoption.